So in this video, I'm planning to wrap up the kitchen build. I just have a few of the finishing touches that I need to go over, starting with the end panels. So last fall, I bought a bunch of cherry veneer plywood for my kitchen project. I bought some half inch thick plywood for end panels and stuff. And then I bought a whole bunch of 3 16 inch plywood for the door panels. And I kind of messed up in my figuring and I bought too much 3 16 plywood and not enough half inch plywood. So here I'm working on end panels now for the one side of the kitchen and I, well, I, don't, I don't have enough half inch plywood. And I have too much of the skinny stuff. And I'm like, well, I could go out and buy some more plywood, but then I don't really have any purpose for the 3 16 cherry plywood. And so, uh, I mean, the smart thing to do would be to just go out and buy some more half inch plywood. Um, I decided to try to do something else. And instead I took the 3 16 plywood and I glued it on to just some sanded fur because this part's going to be against the kitchen cabinet. Nobody's going to see it. You're only going to see this side. And so I did that. I did that for both of the uh, end panels for the lower cabinet. Let me get in close and I'll show you. Here's a close up showing the veneer cord cherry plywood on here. And then here is the sanded fur that is glued together to make up the end panel. So it used a whole ton of glue, of course, because it just uh, you're using a lot of glue and the, and the dry wood just soaks it right up. So I think I used, uh, this, was, this was a brand new bottle just the other day and it's now half empty. So I've used, uh, you know, 16 ounces or, you know, half a, half a liter of glue. And uh, so, yeah, it might not have been the most smart financial move because, I mean, I still had to buy the sheet of uh, 3 8 plywood for 40 bucks. So, I mean, I think I'll be still using that in some other cabinet projects. Um, but anyway, so I still had to buy that and I had to pay for the glue and I had to do all the work. And um, a half inch sheet of plywood would have been something like 100 to $120 depending on where I bought it. So, anyways, I'm just telling the story here. I'm not really sure it's the right thing to do, but that's what I did. So anyways, with the panels made, I applied several coats of poly and then brought them up to install. I showed one panel installation in a previous video, and this is just more of the same. After fitting each panel into place, I clamped it and then screwed into the panel from inside the cabinet, using short screws and being very careful not to go through. And with it done, no one can tell the difference between a panel that I made using half-inch cherry plywood or a panel that I made using fir plywood and thin 3 16 plywood. And I also added some short side panels above the sink to cover over the exposed sides there. Here above the sink I added an LED light fixture. I didn't use the IKEA ones because I wanted one that was direct wired into the wall. For, a, for casting lots of light on your, on your sink for your working, we wanted the light fairly close to the front, but we don't want to see it. So I've, I prepared a piece of uh, cherry just two inches wide that I've put some finish on and I'm going to attach that right here so that will block cover up the cover up the front of the light gives it a nice little bit of trim it's recessed back so it goes flush with the front of the cabinet not flush with the front of the doors So down here at the floor level, the kick plate for the IKEA cabinets is set just a little bit farther back than it was on the original cabinets, which wouldn't matter except for the fact that we replaced this floor several years ago, which meant the floor went around the cabinets. And so now you see this strip here along the front where you can see the old tile and the new tile. And, uh, that's easy enough to deal with. I, I went out to the hardware store and I bought some quarter round. I've painted it black and we'll be fastening that down here in front. You can get quarter round that's pretty big or you could just make it yourself.
So way up here by the ceiling, way up here at the top, I've still got this gap that needs to be filled up. And the ceiling's, it's not perfectly flat. But anyways, down in the shop, I've prepared some stock to go up here now. My kitchen is 111 inches. I don't have anything 111 inches long, so I knew there was going to be some seams. And I've just decided not to worry about it because it's up by the ceiling. All right. Down in my shop, I pre-finished some wood, which I'm just going to tack into place now. Not sure how easy it is to see here. I'm just going to try focusing on my face here, but up here in the corner, the sides of the cabinets are just a little bit higher than the tops of the cabinets. So there's just a tiny gap here. You know, I, I could try fixing that, but frankly, I don't care. It's going to be practically invisible. So what I did here, here, two pieces come together here. I just have a tiny little wedge and I'm putting under there just to lift the two piece, lift the two pieces up. So they're both together. Now keep in mind, there's nothing structural going on here. This is just a little decorative thing. So a couple of little 23 gauge pins. I mean, it just needs to hold it so it's not gonna move. I mean, it's not gonna, you know, it's not holding up the cabinets, just making it look a little nicer. And after a little bit of fitting and trimming and sanding and all that, we got the other side done too. And with that, I'm calling this video series complete. I'll fade away to a video montage now, as I'm sure you're more interested in seeing the kitchen than my lovely face. There are still some little bits to complete. Like for example, I still need to run some caulking along the back edge of the counter, but I don't think there's any more videos hiding in this kitchen. We started this back in September, and here we are about seven months later. So it was not a particularly fast process, but we also took our time and we took a few breaks here and there, and I think being able to split the project in chunks by first doing the pantry and then working on each side of the kitchen in turn, that really helped keep the stress level down and just paced things out. Yes, we're very happy with it. Both my wife and I love the look of the natural cherry and we look forward to seeing the color deepen with time. We also quite like the hardware. We've never had soft closed drawers or hinges before. And of course the insides are all Ikea. Oh, that's a mess. So we can go to the store and buy some accessories that are all sized to fit these drawers and these cabinets. So as always, thanks for stopping by and spending some time in my shop and in my kitchen. And we'll see you on the next video.